Friends of Model Trains, welcome to another digital video. In today's video, I would like to show you our occupancy sensor with article number 10819. What is an occupancy sensor? What do we need one for and how do you connect it to the track and to the Z21 digital system? What is a detector? What is an occupancy sensor? An occupancy sensor helps monitor vehicles in the system. What does this mean? This means, for example, that it shows where a vehicle is located on the system in the app or in a PC control program. For example, if you have a staging yard or a storage yard under the system that you cannot monitor with your eyes, you can use the occupancy sensor to display the position of the vehicles using the app. The first step is to connect the occupancy sensor to the control center with the R bus. The cable you need for this is of course included with the occupancy sensor. This is similar to a mouse with the same plug. Connect the cable to the occupancy sensor and plug the other end into the R bus of the Z21. The control center can now receive the data from the occupancy sensor, but the occupancy sensor does not yet contain any data. That means it has to be connected to the track for its power supply. Up here you have 2 times 8 connection options for up to 16 sections that you want to monitor. Remove the 2-pole track voltage from the track and power the occupancy sensor. This can be done directly from the control center, or connect any point on the track to the occupancy sensor. When the power supply is plugged into the occupancy sensor, the blue status LED lights up. This means that the occupancy sensor is in contact with the control center through the R bus and is also supplied with power. Then the sections have to be connected. To do this, the areas has to be separated from the track. I'll show you that now. In this area, for example, we want to monitor the two station tracks. These are the track sections between the two turnouts. To connect the occupancy sensor, you have to insulate the whole thing with one pole. This means that one track has to be separated. For this purpose, we will again install an insulating connector at the beginning and end of the section and then fit the whole thing with an additional cable. Then connect this cable to the occupancy sensor. The insulating connector is used to insulate the track. It really doesn't matter which track you use, the right or the left. It just has to be the same side throughout the system. First remove the locomotive from the track. Separate the tracks and fit the insulating connectors for our feedback message to the front tracks. To supply these tracks with voltage again, they have to be connected to the occupancy sensor. The connection cable is used here. This is a two-pole connection cable for normal track connection. But since the two are used separately, simply pull them apart and then you have two single connection cables for two sections. Of course you have the option of soldering a cable to the rail profile. Whatever you prefer. Now connect the two cables to the two inputs of the occupancy sensor. Go to the signal box in the app and select the occupancy sensor using the plus symbol at the top. You add it once here and once there. Then tap again. The gear wheel takes you to the configuration menu. Here you will find occupancy sensor 10819. It is the first occupancy sensor with address 1 and input 1. Now we switch to the second track section. The same occupancy sensor, module address 1, but here we now have input number 2. And now the feedback message is set up in the app. We save, go back, and as you can see, it lights up red. We have a feedback message. We can now see the red lighting for our block here. If you now take the locomotive off the track, you will see that the feedback message goes out.
The locomotive is back on the track, the feedback message goes on again. This means that the occupancy sensor is correctly connected. Of course, the whole thing also works when you drive out of the section. As soon as you leave the section, the feedback message goes off. If you enter the second section as soon as you drive over the separation point, the feedback message goes on again right away. One question that is often asked at info days and trade fairs is how long a block should be. We always recommend that the block be as long as the longest train, which means that the whole train should fit from the beginning to the end of the block. And the second question is, how many blocks do you need? You always need one more block than you have vehicles. If you have two blocks in a row, that's not enough. You can only travel from one block to the next. If you have three blocks, you can drive the first locomotive into the second block and then into the third block, and then you can move the next locomotive up. The more blocks you have, the more vehicles can travel at the same time. So that's it for the occupancy sensor. The occupancy sensor can be used to display the areas of the system where a vehicle is located. This is also explained in writing in Digital for Beginners, Volume 3, again with the Z21 start, with the 10819, with the Z21 app and the addition for PC control. How do you set it all up on the PC? You can write in the comments if you would like us to explain this for PC control. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.